just want to give you all the glory. We thank you because you're good, your mercies and tears forever. Father, we ask that, Lord, you will come for that praise, Lord. We ask that you will inhabit the praises of your people this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's a privilege this morning to be with you this morning. We just want to say thank you to the almighty Yeshua who has kept you and I alive this morning. We want to welcome everyone this morning to the presence of God. This is the Amazing Grace Christian Center where we watch, where we pray, and where we preach and teach the word of God. We want to say a very big thank you once again for joining us in this morning's service. And I believe that as you have joined us, that the good Lord through the Holy Spirit will minister to your needs this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of the month, you know, of May. You know, the month of May usually will say is the month of grace. I pray that the grace of the Lord will meet you at every point of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we're going to be looking at, we're going to be starting a series titled, Push the Boundaries. Push the Boundaries. Throughout the month of May, we're going to be looking at this theme. So we're going to be looking at what does it mean to push boundaries? We're going to be looking at, you know, boundaries as a whole. We're going to be looking at, you know, everything that connotes that particular theme. And our foundational scriptures is taken from Genesis chapters 26, verses 12 to 13, and then Genesis chapter 41, verses 38 to 41, and then Ephesians 3, verses 20 to 21. That will be our key foundational scripture. Once again, you're very much welcome. We want to thank God for grace. We want to thank him for his mercies. We can't stop saying thank you to God for his grace, for his mercies, and for his faithfulness. I want to start by making us aware that life itself is full of boundaries. Remember, I did say that we're going to be going into a series called Push the Boundaries. Push the Boundaries. Throughout the month of May, that is what we're going to be looking at. So, I want to say that life in itself is full of boundaries. You have parameters or limits with time. You have boundaries or limits with speed, with your health, you know, everything. And the list goes on. Having that in mind, let's take a look at journey as we explore our theme of the month, like I said, 2021, push the boundaries. Listen, I said push the boundaries, not push the boundary. Push the boundaries with, the, with, with R-I-E-S, not boundary with a D-A-R-Y. So you can, look, you can see that it is not just one boundary that you've got to push. There are several. And for those that is just one, you are also welcome on board. So we're going to be looking at that, you know, pushing boundaries, you know. And also we're going to be looking at, you know, how do we push these boundaries? Or as God wills, you can push all the boundaries, you know, either one or all of, the, all of them at the same time or you do them in succession. But what matters is that you must be able to push those boundaries. You must be able to push those boundaries. The last 15 months, I just want you to reflect within, you know, UK, within the continent of the world, all over the world, in the last, within the last 15 months, has been very challenging due to the unseen enemy called coronavirus, COVID-19, in short. COVID visited planet Earth with a vengeance. And as a result, he put boundaries on planet Earth that 
people initially had to stay within those limitations. People had to stay within those confinements or those boundaries. Some people described COVID visitation as an imprisonment because people were limited with the choices they had to make. The freedom of movement was restricted and people seem as if they have been locked up. And they seem it appeared that they were in bondage. Why? Because COVID had actually put a limitation and restricted people within the last 15 months. But you know what? In no time, people refused to sit back. They refused to watch and allow the unseen enemy to put in perpetual prison of life. Governments, people began to push the boundaries. They began to push the limitations as much as they can with all their might. They ensured that they break. Those limitations were broken. To God be the glory, those boundaries began to break because people, government began to push back. They wouldn't allow the unseen enemy to put them in perpetual bondage of prison. And what is the story now? As we can see, those limitations began to break, you know, gradually. And it will continue to break until it is totally broken in Jesus' name. Amen. We will be looking into what it really means to push the boundary positively to achieve not just anyhow result, but a positive result that will not only be beneficial to us, to fulfill purpose and destiny, but to mankind as a whole. In this series, we would explore and try to understand the terminology boundary, the need and how to push boundaries, the specific and important boundaries to push, results of pushing boundaries and the consequences of not pushing boundaries. I bet you don't want to miss any of this series at all. You do not want to miss it. But let me just pause here for a bit. And I want to ask you to do something. Please, may I humbly request that you please share this, this broadcast. I want you to just share it now. Press that button and share to your loved ones, to your friends, to your family and everyone that you are connected with. I just want you to do that. Thank you and God bless you for doing that. Let's read our key scriptures. Please, can you open the Bible with me? Let's open to the book of Genesis chapter 26, chapter 26, verses 12 to 13. And the word of God says, and I'll read, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Bible, the word of the Lord, which is truth, tells me that as a result of Isaac sowing, the Lord blessed him. 13, it says, the man began to prosper and continued prospering and he became very prosperous. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 41, verses 38 to 41. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? Ha! Listen, let's pause there. <laughs> can God say that about you? Can God say that about me? Ha! Can, can God even boast of you and I and say, that, or even if it's not God, can your boss at work say that about you? <laughs> can your community person representative, can your MP say that about you? Can they say Eunice? <laughs> can we find such one as Eunice <laughs> in whom the spirit of God is resting upon? Ah, Verse 39 says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Ah, brothers and sisters, can, 
can a testimony about you be given concerning that which Pharaoh was saying about Joseph? And verse 40 says, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto the word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Wow. Wow. What a testimony. What a testimony. Listen, Joseph did not just get there. Pharaoh did not just start telling Joseph about that. There were some things that made Joseph uh, to be qualified uh, to be able for, the, uh, for Pharaoh to be able to say that concerning him. Why don't you pause now and reflect? What has people said concerning you? Just follow me carefully. And the third foundational scripture, and I read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21, and it says, now unto him hey, 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 that is able, I'm excited, uh, to do exceedingly uh, above all that we ask or think, uh, according to the power that worketh in us, uh, unto him be glory in the bakasata kalibrakata, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. World without end. Amen. Hey, just follow me carefully. We are still on our theme. Push the boundaries. Let's look at what boundaries mean. Just the literary meaning of boundaries. The literary meaning of boundaries. It means boundaries are defense systems or territorial limitations. Do you know what? When I was just looking at this, uh, you know, for me, my own personal definition, how I came up, you know, when I looked at boundaries, you know, for me, my own personal definition of boundaries is the things that have been put in place to either make you or my you. That's my own. You wouldn't find this in the dictionary. This is just Eunice's own definition of boundaries. So it, 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 those things that have been set in place, those things that have been put in place that can either make you or my you. Boundaries, like I said, are defense systems or territorial limitations which hinder our movement. It hinders our advancement to take back territory and break the limitation. You must be ready to fight. Today, we're just going to be uh, 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 um, just um, looking at the foundation. We're just looking at the foundation. We're just going to understand what boundaries means and what is boundaries when they talk about boundaries. That's what we're just going to be looking at today. And then by God's grace, throughout the series, we're going to be going deeper. And that's why I said you cannot afford to miss this. The dictionary defines it as something that indicates or fixes a limit or extent. That is what the dictionary tells us that it means. If boundaries indicate limits, it means that boundaries can pose the capacity to stop you or limit you from something. Therefore, the limitation may cause a setback to achieve any purpose or may mean that the limitation may help you to stay within the parameters of obedience. For example, we are advised to make sure that we stay within, uh, within uh, uh, to stay inside of God's will so that we can enjoy quite a lot from God. For example, when you stay within the parameters uh, of God, uh, you will enjoy his presence. Uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 21, Living Bible Translation, TLB tells us to stay always, uh, always uh, within the boundaries where God's love can reach and bless you. It says stay within the parameters. It says stay within the boundaries uh, where God's love can reach and bless you. Wait patiently for the eternal life that our Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy is going to give you. This type of boundaries may be classified as a positive boundary, meaning that boundaries can be, pos be a positive thing or a negative thing, depending on how you may want to use it to your own advantages. It is all about your choice. You've got to make that choice. Boundaries can also mean parameters. The definition of boundaries 
implies and reveals that healthy boundaries are for keeping negativity and its elements such as an such as abuse, such as harassment, such as cruelty, such as manipulation out of your life and relationships. It therefore means that when you set a boundary, it will limit what you can or cannot accept from other people to include their actions. Like I said, we're just setting the foundation today. We're looking at boundaries. But guess what? There are some boundaries that are good for us. They are good for you and they are good for me. God himself loved boundaries. Hence, God put boundaries between all his creation. For example, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 31, God created an ordered world full of boundaries where divisions exist between earth and heaven. <laughs> There's a boundaries between heaven and earth. There's a boundary between earth and darkness, which God then called day and night. This is boundary. He called it day and night. There is boundary between the earth. There is boundary between the sky. There's boundary between the water. There's boundary between the land. And there are boundaries between the star, the moon. They might look alike, but there are boundaries within the, between the star, between the moon and the sun. And in the plant world and in the animal world, life reproduces within boundaries. And the Bible says that they reproduce according to their kind. We're talking about boundaries here. Father, God distinguishes his image bearers, which is you and I, from all of his creation when he commands them to be fruitful and multiply. For example, as a human, I cannot begin to reproduce a lion. He says, fill the earth and subdue it and to exercise dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is what I call God giving boundaries. Boundaries are about taking responsibilities for our own lives and being accountable for our actions. God gives us freedom to choose to live within his boundaries or outside of them. And to live outside of God's boundaries means to accept the consequences of such. Please see Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to the end. Living inside God's boundaries brings blessings and living outside of them brings destruction and death. Please see Romans chapter 6 verse 23 and in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. Adam and Eve had one boundary in the Garden of Eden. You will agree with me. And the Lord told them to abstain from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord gave them freedom to remain within his boundaries, just as the Lord is giving you and I the freedom, the choice to remain within his bounds. But what did Adam and Eve do? They chose to overstep the boundaries. They pushed the boundaries where they were not meant to push it. You and I are sometimes like that, when we're not meant to push boundaries outside the limit that God, outside the parameters that God has set. This is what normally happens. So they chose to overstep the boundary and sin entered. Their response to God's re re revelation of their sin was to blame each other. Just like you and I. <laughs> Don't you blame people. <laughs> Instead of you to take responsibility for your actions and, uh, and be accountable to your actions, uh, you try to put it on somebody else. Uh, we live in a blame culture. We live in a blame world where we want to shift blames uh, to other people. That was exactly what Adam and Eve did here. Rather than take responsibility for the lack of their self-control, uh, Eve blamed Satan and Adam blamed Eve. You can find that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 12 to 13. Boundaries limit destructive behaviors. Uh, and that is why both God and society have laws and consequences for those who overstep those laws. Please see Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. Therefore, every man has been given a space to function. You've been given a space to function here on earth. 
and had a dominion over that territorial space uh, using the power of choice. Like I said, we're just building today. We're just laying the foundation. By the special grace of God, you can't afford to miss this. I want to ask of you again, can you just pause for a minute and just begin to share, to share to your loved ones because somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody at the sound of my voice needs to hear this so that they can begin to set the right boundaries. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. There are different types of boundaries you can choose to set or push. Nonetheless, for the purpose of our theme, I will limit it to just three types of boundaries, namely personal boundaries. <laughs> Some of us don't even bother to do that, uh, to, to set personal boundaries. Uh. And then you've got emotional and psychological boundaries. Uh. You've got mental or spiritual boundaries. Uh. Mental and spiritual boundaries. Uh. Personal boundaries are those limitations or pa parameters you set to include your personal space. Your personal space, which means you decide who you can allow into your personal space or who, you, who can touch you, how you want to function. In fact, that personal boundary is a space where you make soul decisions and choices which may influence your life and destiny. For example... As a Christian, you are meant to put personal boundaries around your identity because you are meant to put a, a personal boundaries around your identity because in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, it tells us uh, that you are made in the image and in the likeness of God. You are made in the image and in the likeness of God. And God created you. He created you male and female. He created you in his image and in his likeness. As a matter of fact, anything you have authority over requires an intentional boundary to be placed around it. Albeit, you must push boundaries against anything that is not in line with what we contradict those truths about your identity in the word of God that you have put in place in, in, in and around your personal boundaries. Then quickly, I want to touch briefly on emotional boundaries. They include your emotional intelligence, how you are emotionally intelligent. And it's about your feelings. It's about being aware of other people's feelings. However, not allowing it to affect or impact on your, on your feelings negatively. It's about self-control, which involves the choices you make around your emotional regulation your emotional regulation and stability. You cannot allow other people's feelings and choices to impact and affect your emotional boundaries. Because if this happens, then it means that you have not set any boundaries at all. Emotional boundaries is what you set or push. You set or push them by yourself, for yourself, and on yourself. Remember that you are most likely to be in total control of your feelings and able to make that choice about who, how you feel, unless there are any underlining health issues. Titus chapter 2 verse 12 says, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. The third boundary that I'm going to quickly touch and then we move on, is the mental or spiritual boundaries, which include your thoughts, your values, your opinions, your beliefs, faith, and principles. For you to have the appropriate spiritual boundaries, you must know the truth. Because we know that when you know the truth, it will set you free. You must know the truth. We study the word of God, and not only stop there, but commit to following and doing it. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. According to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, we must also discern and screen out the lies. Have nothing to do with godly, godless meat and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself 
to be godly according to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. What does it really mean to exert or to push boundaries? Like I said, we're still building the foundation. We're still building the foundation. So I want you to follow me carefully. What does it really mean to exert or push boundaries? It is to exert force. To exert force or on someone or something. Hey, when you push boundaries, you are exerting force or on something or someone in order to move them away from you. For example, if I want to push somebody that is blocking me, for example, if there's something, if there's, if there's a huge man in front of me and I want to push that man away, you know, maybe that man's strength is much more than mine. So I have to exert force and make sure that I push that man away or that thing that is blocking me or not allowing me to take the next step. Remember that boundaries is putting a limit. So to push boundaries, you must exert force on that limit away from you. Sometimes when you hear that someone is pushing boundaries, it means that lines have been crossed. Therefore, goalposts are shifted. When you push boundaries, it means that the line is crossed and then your goalpost is shifted. However, you are staying in your lane. You are staying in your lane. Even as you are pushing the boundaries, you are in your lane and you are crossing the line. You, the goalpost keep moving. It keeps shifting. That's what you're doing. Push the boundaries is to exert force and fight to break the limits. It means finding the line that you are afraid to cross. That line that you are afraid to cross. Listen, someone at the sound of my voice, uh -huh. you've been afraid to cross a particular line and you've been sat there for years. Uh, the Lord will have me tell you that, listen, he's with you. Therefore, you have to then move forward. You have to push that boundaries. Uh, even as the Lord liveth, he says that he will back you. I'm pushing it out further. That line you're afraid to cross, you push it and then pushing it out further. It means expanding your horizons. Your horizons will be expanded when you push boundaries. It means overcoming limitations. It means overcoming and conquering your fears. Aha. It means stepping out of your comfort zone. Come on. Your comfort zone. You've Stand, you've, you've, you've sat there for too long. You've stood there for too long. And you are going round and round and round about just like the children of Israelites. Oh, the Lord will have me tell you how that comfort zone needs to be shaken off. That comfort zone needs to be taken away. It needs to move so that your boundaries are so that you can step out of obscurity and step into your destiny. That is a word for someone this morning. In the name of Jesus, you need to step out of your comfort zone. You are, if you are still sitting there, you are already born. Listen, deliverance has come to you this morning. Even as the Lord wills, you are stepping out of that comfort zone in Jesus' name. If you have to push boundaries, you must break loose from that comfort zone. Anna was a woman who pushed boundaries. She fought and refused to allow spiritual negativity, the boundaries around spiritual negativity and medical negativity to stop her from making sure that she conceived her. Even her husband was not able to stop her. Her husband was not able to stop her. Hannah became intentional. He became determined. Ha <laughs> ha. Nothing was going to stop her because you know what? Hannah knew that the word of God says uh, that none shall be barren. Uh, and Anna held on to the word of the Lord. Uh, uh, even though Elkanah was saying uh, that she was more than 10 sons, uh, Anna refused to take that word uh, because the word of the Lord is sure. Uh, Anna knew that it would surely happen. Uh, so Anna pushed the, the, the boundaries. Uh, she became intentional. She became determined because nobody was going to stop her. And she became very conscious uh, and with her approach uh, about how she pushed the boundaries, about what she wanted. Uh, and the Bible tells us uh, that Anna went to Shiloh. It was a yearly sacrifice that she made. She paid a hard price for it. And the Bible makes us to understand that each year, Anna would go on that journey to Shiloh as she pushed the boundary. And then it was yet one more Shiloh. And then as she pushed the boundary, Ah, Samuel came forth. As she pushed the boundary, she pushed harder. And ah, Samuel came forth. Listen, I want you to pause there and reflect. Uh -huh. 
You may have been pushing boundaries. Uh, and then it seems that nothing is happening. Oh, I want to announce to you that the Lord will have me tell you this morning. Uh, oh, this afternoon, wherever you are tuning in from, uh, that stay in there. Uh, one more push uh, and your somewhere will be better. One more push, uh, your somewhere will comfort. Uh, just Continue to push. Uh, just push. Be intentional. Uh, be intentional about your pushing. Uh, just like Hannah did. Uh, and your Samuel will be battered. Two of our foundational scriptures. Uh, in Genesis chapter 26. Verses 12 to, to, uh, uh, to 13. And Genesis 41. Verses 38 to 41. We've read it. I just want to briefly just share some few things with you there. In the first one, which is Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 to 13, we see the manifestation of obedience here. Isaac decided to push the boundaries by actually staying within the parameters uh, of what God has actually said, the, the boundaries uh, that God set for him. We know that, you know, uh, uh, there was a famine in that land. Uh, and <clears throat> Isaac decided that he was going to go to Egypt. But to God be the glory, because Isaac had actually lived in obedience. Uh, and the Lord appeared to him, we were told in the Bible, which is the truth word of God. It's a true word of God. And it says, and God told him that not to actually go down to Egypt. If you remember, I don't know, <laughs> if you remember many of them, they will always flee to Egypt. They will always go down to Egypt. And I can only uh, 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 know that um, Egypt, you know, is very close to Nile. And if famine is actually severe in other parts of, 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 of the surroundings uh, in Israel, it, it will not actually be as severe in Egypt because they are surrounded, you know, the Nile, you, you, you know, actually uh, uh, is very close to them there. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and told Isaac not to go down to Egypt. And Isaac obeyed, he listened, and the Lord told him that he was going to actually uh, bless him in that place that he is, which is Gera. And Isaac decided to stay in Gera. He decided to stay there. And then, because the Lord has spoken, Isaac began to plant. Isaac began to plant. And as he planted, the Bible makes us to understand that it became prosperous. But if you read the whole of that chapter, you will see some things that happened to Isaac. Despite, you can imagine, a famine. The Bible tells us that famine, actually, there was a famine in that land. And, you know, as he planted, as, as he was as he planted, what happened was that people became envious of him. People became envious. It's just like when God actually decided to create Goshen for the children of Israel. Well, other people were impoverishing. The children of Israel had nothing to lack. They did not lack anything. It's the same thing that was happening to Isaac here. Because Isaac decided to stay within the parameters, within the boundaries of obedience. And despite the hostility, we read again in the same chapter that even as Isaac dug the well, you know, he was digging wells, he was digging wells. Uh, he pushed hard. Uh, if it were to be you and I, uh, when we dig the first well, uh, we will say, no, we're not doing anymore. We might even return back to Egypt, uh, where God has actually said not to go to. But Isaac persisted. Uh, he was consistent, uh, and he dug the well. He planted. He became prosperous. People became envious, and even out of the envy, the well of Rehoboth came forth. Uh, he burned the, rain, the, the, the well of Rehoboth, which means the Lord has created a play, a space for him. Listen, uh, someone at the sound of my voice, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've just come to encourage you this morning. Uh, the Lord will have me tell you this afternoon that continue to push up, uh, continue to dig that well. Uh, your well, your spirit space uh, will erupt uh, your space. Uh, God will give you your rehobot uh, in that particular place uh, where there is hostility, where there is envy. The Lord, even as he did it for Isaac, will do it for you. Why? Because you have stayed within the parameters of obedience. Why? Because you are a covenant child. 
just like Isaac because God told Isaac he was doing it because of his father, Abraham, because he has a covenant. And we are part of that covenant. Glory to God. Church, you need to make up your mind that you will not accept what life will just dump at you. But you must push and take it by force. After all, Jesus paid the price of all things when he became poor for you to be rich. He took upon himself infirmities and by his stripes, you and I, we are healed. After all, Jesus said that it is finished on the cross, meaning that he has paid the price for everything. And when Jesus says it is finished, Jesus gives you the capacity to be able to push the, the boundaries. He says that all things have been paid for. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 to 16 tells us that having wiped away handwriting of requirements uh, that was against us, including uh, the negativity of boundaries. Uh, he says, having wiped away the handwriting of requirement that was against us, uh, which was contrary to us, uh, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, uh, having disarmed principalities and powers, uh -huh, he made a public spectacle of, of them, triumphing over them in it. You just got to push beyond the line of limitation that life has dumped on you. You don't have to accept it. I hear many people say that life is not fair. Yes, it will not be fair. You have to push away that unfairness that life has dumped on you. Pushing boundaries is therefore removing the limitations. Embargoes, blessed by humans, blessed by society, blessed by religion, blessed by culture, blessed by environment, and even blessed by yourself, then breaking forth and breaking out without your God, within your God-given capacity. I want you to follow me carefully. There is a man I want to quickly talk about, a man that is, country, is currently living here on planet Earth, a man that is from UK, he lives in the UK, a man that everyone celebrates today. This person is no other person than Richard Branson. Richard Branson was talking about how he was able to push boundaries, how he was able to break limitations, how he was able to make it because he became tired of obscurity. And <laughs> permit me to talk about him for just a few minutes. This is a man who grew from nothing to a household name. And now, all over the world, he's been celebrated. This man pushed boundaries. And hear what he said, and I quote, for far too many people don't excel in life because they are too afraid of taking the necessary steps to achieve their dreams. Some manifest fear as a safeguard from failure. Did you hear that? Hello? Some manifest fear. The spirit of fear has overtaken many. And they use it as a safeguard, just like Richard Branson is saying here. And I'll read that again. He says, some manifest fear as a safeguard from failure. Others don't even try. Oh, anyone that is at the sound of my voice that have been gripped by the spirit of fear, I command the spirit of fear to be broken over your life in the name of Jesus. Let it live your life right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and I release the spirit of liberty, liberty in Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I continue to read from Richard Branson's quote, and he says, some manifest fear as a safeguard from failure. Others don't even try, believing that they are restricted by limits. Did you hear that? You just believe. You know, we talked about spiritual uh, uh, boundaries, your thoughts, your beliefs. And Richard Branson is telling us here that believing that they are restricted by limits, while too many get caught up in the status quo. Hey! I come against every status quo. Huh? Ah, anyone that is on that, the sound of my voice, huh? we break the limits of status quo in the name of Jesus. Huh? And he says, and I continue to read, growing up, 
I felt all these pressures. All these pressures were felt by Richard Branson. But instead of giving in to them, I decided to ignore them and push the boundaries. He said he pushed the boundaries. Had I not, I would not be where I am today. Continue to read. And he said, to inspire you to chase your heart's desires, here are my 10 top quotes on pushing boundaries. And I'll quickly read that to you. This is a man that grew from obscurity. I'm not sure whether he's a believer or he's not a believer. But you know what? He knew that he will not allow limits to make him to fulfill destiny. So he's saying or he said that he had to push boundaries. And these are his quotes. The things that inspired him. The things that inspired him. And I'm going to start from the number 10. I'm going to start from the number 10 one as he wrote it. And he said, the sky is not my limit. Listen, these quotes were what Richard Branson read that inspired him to push boundaries. Let alone you that is a child of God. That you've got <laughs> the king of all inspirations with you. The Holy Spirit. The word of God. The word of truth. Follow me as I quickly read Richard Branson's inspiring quotes. The sky is not my limits. I am. Can you see that? And this was written by T.F. Hodge. This man is saying that, you know, everybody says sky is your limit. So why, what about if you get to the sky? What's going to happen? <laughs> Where these people are discovering, you know, they are, they are going to the sky now. They are going to our other planets. What about if you guys to the... So T.F. Hodge, according to Branson, you know, says that the sky is not his limit. He is the limit. I am, he said. A planet is the cradle of mind, but one cannot live in a cradle forever. Did you hear that? So it, it means that you've got to push it. You cannot continue to live in that cradle. And that was said by Konstantin Siglovsky. Number eight, it says, the number of ways to live in one lifetime is limitless. So why limit yourself? The number of ways to live in one lifetime is limitless. So why limit yourself? This was actually said by Susie Kassem. And then number seven, it says, dreams have always expanded our understanding of reality by changing our boundaries of the real, of the possible. And that was said by Henry Reed. Number six, it says, when they say you can't, they show you their limits. Hey, I think this is, this is quite key. When they say you can't, you know, many people have put you down. You have boundaries by words. I said you have to, you can't afford to miss any of this series because we're going to be looking into that. Words and this person that I don't even know whether they are Christians or not is saying that when they say you can't and many people have had their lives, have got negativity spoken over their lives. When they say you can't, they show you their limits, not yours. So as from today, when anybody is saying that you cannot, uh, tell them you can. It is them that cannot. Uh, and this was said by Kevin Kino. Number five, the human spirit is like an elastic band. The human spirit is like an elastic band. The more you stretch, the greater your capacity. And this was said by a Nigerian by the name of Bidemi Mark Modi. Bidemi Mark Modi. The human spirit is like an elastic band. The more you stretch, the greater your capacity. So it means that you can push boundaries. You can push it. You can push it. The more you are pushing, the more capacity you are having. The more you are pushing, the Holy Spirit is giving you capacity. After all, it says that, that you, can do, uh, you can do everything through Christ that strengthens you. And then number four, it says, there are no limitations to the mind except those that are acknowledged. There are no limitations to the mind except those that are acknowledged. And this was said by Napoleon Hill. 
The finite mind tries to limit the infinite. Wow. And this was said by Toba Better. Or Toba Better. Number two, the only limits in your life are those you set yourself. The only limits in your life are those that you set yourself. So which means wherever that you are right now, <laughs> you have set yourself to be there. Because this quote is saying that you can push, you can exert your force. And this was said by Celestine Chua. And then number one quote that inspired Richard Branson, it says, we cannot become what we want to be by remaining where we are. Did you hear that? You cannot become, we cannot become what we want to be by remaining in one spot. That's what he's saying, literally. And this was said by Max the Prayer. As I close, when have you succeeded by pushing the limits? And what boundaries do you want to break next? What is the boundary that you want to break next? The Richard Branson top 10 quotes to push boundaries, you know, are the top 10 quotes that inspired him, like you said, to, like, like I said, him to push boundaries that brought him from obscurity to where he is now. Where are your own 10 or even one? Please permit me to challenge you and also invite you to explore the word of God where you will meet the king of kings through the Holy Spirit himself, the one that gave wisdom to men that inspired the top 10 quotes. It is God that gave those men that did those quotes. He's the one I'm introducing to you this morning. The one I call ancient of days. The one that I call all-knowing God. The teacher himself. The teacher of all teachers and the Lord of all inspirations. Let him inspire you with biblical quotations. Let him inspire you and give you the strength to be able to push boundaries. For example, in Philippians Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. He says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord who God, your God, who gives, who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Ah, he says in John 17, 17, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. So you will find the word of God that inspires you to be able to push the boundaries and he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he says, for he knows the plan that he has for you, declares the Lord. The Lord is telling someone this afternoon that he has a plan, a plan of welfare and not of evil. The Lord is asking me to tell someone this afternoon that every obscurity, every boundary that you have been placed in, he says the Lord is ready to leave you out of it because his plans for welfare for you are good. He says he will give you a few he will give you a destiny and a hope. And again, he said in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, although he said it to Joshua, he says, for every place that the soul of your field will tread upon, I have given it unto you. Just like we write in our, one of our foundational scriptures, uh, Isaac, uh, even though Isaac was a foreigner in that garage, uh, the Lord made him to prosper more than even the Philistines that were there. The Lord is asking me to tell someone this afternoon Noon, wherever that you are, that the soul of your feet has tried upon, that is your inspirational quota. And you have to use that to push the boundaries because the Lord has promised you, if you have not heard it before, hear it right, right now, that the Lord is giving you that land. He's telling you that he will give it to you. You will possess it so that you can fulfill destiny, so that creation that is waiting for you to manifest will be able to benefit. Hallelujah. And as I round up, in the 21st century, everyone wants to do what they want to do. Society has lost some of its boundaries, including moral boundaries. 
the church is not excluded from this. And when I talk about the church, I'm talking about you and I. We are not excluded from this. Families are not excluded. Families are not left out. Individuals inclusive. But God is calling us today to reflect and evaluate our lives. And in as much as we stay within the parameters and the boundaries that God commands us to stay, we must also break and push those boundaries that will not make us to stay within the God ordained parameters or not to fulfill destiny. We have to push those boundaries that has limited us from fulfilling purpose and destiny. There are some boundaries that are placed. These are the boundaries that have been placed upon you by the environment, by culture, by religion, families, and even by yourself. So what are these boundaries? What are these boundaries? Join me next week Sunday as we explore this together. Thank you so much. Even as I round up, I just want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we just want to say thank you. Because you're good and your mercies endures forever. Your mercies endures forever. Daddy, we want to thank you. Even in as much as people that have connected with us. Under the, vo under the sound of my voice this afternoon. I ask the Lord that let there be liberation in every aspect of their lives, in every area that, Lord, liberation is needed. Oh my God, you will liberate them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, this is the Amazing Grace Christian Center where we watch, where we preach, and where we teach. And uh, you are most welcome to join us next week, Sunday, for another series under Push the Boundaries. But hold it there. Before you go, I would like to invite the senior pastor of the Amazing Grace Christian Center just to say a word. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Father, I want to thank you. What a great time in your presence. No man take this honor unto himself except him that is called of God. This is the doing of the Lord and is marvelous in our sight. Thank God for this revelation. God bless you so much, so much, so much. And uh, as we go out of this place, I want you to write the list of the things that has put you in one place, that has limited your life, the things that have become uh, an engagement to your destiny. Write them out. Because today we have received power by this message to break and push every boundaries. By the grace of God upon this platform, you are not limited anymore. Amen. I say you are no more limited. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. By the God of heaven that was with Isaac, and in a strange land, the, man, the, the Bible says, and the man walked strong, and he became great, and he moved forward. Today, you will walk strong. Amen. You will be great. Amen. You will move forward. Amen. You will break limits. Amen. You will break boundaries. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the Lord will take you from zero to hero. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. That is our prayer for you. For adventure. You don't know how to connect with this God that is able to make you work strong mm. and be great mm. and move forward. Mm -hmm. It is so simple. You only need to open your heart and invite him to your life. Right. And say with me right now, if you want to do that, say, Lord, Lord. come into my life. Mm -hmm. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Mm -hmm. And I acknowledge you yeah. as my Lord, as my Savior. Yeah. As you have done that, you have become a member of the family of God. And the power that created the heavens and the earth go with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the spirit that quickened Christ and brought him back to life goes with you. Amen. Therefore, no more embargo in your life. Amen. No more limitations in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, real good. As we celebrate Jesus in your life, we see you next time and next Sunday as we go into part two. Just be ready for more 
revelation and empowerment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week and enjoy the bank holiday. Amen. God bless you. Very good. Amen. Amen.